so what causes autism and what are some of the treatments that are available? Well, a lot of claims have been made over the years for causes for autism. This goes back to the 50s with the description of um, uh, what might be called a refrigerator mother uh, or a very cold style of parenting that put a lot of emphasis on uh, parenting skills for the development of um, behavioral disorders in, in children. Um, on to more uh, recent uh, concerns of uh, mercury, um, and mercury being in um, vaccines, or even the vaccines themselves, especially when they're combined in different ways. With rigorous scientific study, um, uh, there's been no clear-cut cause for autism, either parenting styles um, um, or environmental toxins. We know there's some sort of biologic basis for autism because it does tend to run in families. Some studies have shown subtle changes in the, in, in the brain, in the um, amygdalas, a certain part of the brain in, in some children. So there's probably some sort of biologic genetic uh, component to it, even in some genetic syndromes. Uh, we, you know, uh, children, for example, with um, fragile X tend to have uh, autistic uh, features. So there's some sort of biologic and organic uh, association with autism, but for now, uh, there's no clear cause. While we don't know the cause for autism, there are some good evidence-based treatments that are, av that are av available. And it hasn't always been this way. Uh, for many years, um, behavioral therapies have been studied uh, for autism with mixed results, including um, um, meta-analysis that's taking a bunch of studies and pulling them together to really see, do behavioral therapies work? And for a while there, we were never very sure how much therapy, um, which way to do it exactly, until a recent study uh, published in 2010 by the American Academy of Pediatrics took a look at a specific um, uh, treatment style called the Denver Early Early Start Model. This was an important study for a couple of reasons. One is that it demonstrated that not only do therapies um, uh, work, and this is a pretty specific program of um, about 20 hours a week of behavioral therapy, speech and occupational therapy, but not only do therapies work, but that good studies, uh, uh, good therapies, um, in this Denver Early, Early Start model, compared to just what the community provided, uh, were more effective. So a lot of our um, treatment recommendations are based on starting early intervention, early therapies um, at an appropriate uh, level to help children with autism. First of all, the behavioral therapy. What is behavioral therapy exactly? Well, behavioral therapy is a way of taking a child's behavior and modifying it through um, positive rewards of trying to encourage good behaviors and then um, extinguish um, behaviors which are less, less desirable. This can be initially done, and depending on the child's functional level, with primary uh, reinforcers. Uh, and so it's breaking down an activity into smaller steps and then using something like a food reward um, initially um, um, on into a more appropriate sort of um, social reinforcers. So for example, a child who will not um, uh, point and, and, and reach for an object, say some milk up, up on a counter, um, you break that down into the specific uh, components. For example, start with some eye contact. When you know the child wants, um, say, some milk up, up on a counter, um, uh, nice meaningful eye contact uh, maybe at the object they want and back into the, the parent's eyes. So that would be the first component of that behavior uh, that'd be reinforced with something like a, a raisin treat or, or Cheerios or, or something and then you know on into things like uh, clapping or encouraging a child. Once you get the meaningful eye contact, then something like eye contact and a grunt, eye contact and a point, uh, to finally you're hopefully building these small components of the appropriate behavior into a, mom, can I have that milk on the counter, please? Uh, gradually building, building up to a, a sort of socially or age-appropriate age behavior that you're looking for, broken down into little components. One of the problems with early um, ABA and, and very intensive behavioral therapies is that kids became experts at ABA. They became experts at behavioral therapy, but it didn't necessarily translate into how they were going to do in preschool. So an important component to behavioral therapy is that you gradually generalize um, in, with, 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 with a goal of having socially appropriate behavior in a place like uh, preschool. Um, 
where sometimes parents, even more affluent parents, might just do you know, 40 hours a week of behavioral therapy um, and, and their kids can get very good, often have, when I see those children in the office, often have a very uh, mechanical sort of robotic sort of speech and kind of an eerie way that they answer questions. They've been trained to do it over and over, uh, but really have lots of difficulties when they transition into, in, into preschool. Now, for the diagnostic criteria and addressing the deficits of the communication, social interactions, restricted interest, repetitive behaviors, something like speech therapy is also important. So part of the behavioral uh, therapy program is incorporating speech therapy. Uh, when children are pre-verbal, before they have uh, much uh, language and, and, and being able to, to speak words, a lot of the communication skills are going to be taught by a behavioral therapist. But as soon as language is being started to develop, or even in, in some cases pre-verbally, speech therapy is uh, important. Again, for the acquisition of language, uh, but then also using the language appropriately, what we might call language pragmatics, using their words uh, to communicate and to interact uh, socially. Uh, occupational therapy, I remember as uh, part of the old diagnostic criteria, um, um, not specifically mentioning having abnormal sensory responses, but it almost universally being present, and the new diagnostic criteria, which includes unusual sensory responses, some things like occupational therapy may help there. Um, often we'll talk about maybe something called sensory diet, and that is um, uh, meeting a child's sensory needs throughout the day so that their um, unusual sensory responses are lessened at times when it might be inappropriate. Uh, social skills programs, again, going along with um, the deficits we know with children have is um, helping them in just in practical ways uh, to interact uh, socially. Um, this can be done as part of a formal program uh, or even uh, incorporated into uh, behavioral therapy. A nice comprehensive uh, therapy program of about 20 hours a week is appropriate for most children with uh, mild to moderate autism. Now when behavioral therapies fail, what's left? What do we um, uh, go to next? There's a host of alternative medicine therapies, uh, none of them which are, 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 are very scientific or evidence-based, and then some medications, uh, which I'll talk about, which I end up using occasionally for children when the behavior, uh, behavioral therapies and other uh, therapy strategies have failed. I'll be talking about that in the next chapter.